Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Teamfight Tactics video. My name is Christoph and today I'll be teaching you everything you need to know how to play that comp that's been oppressively dominating Teamfight Tactics, the Nobles. I'll cover all the details including how to play out the different stages of the game, what units you should be looking for, and what units you can tech or pivot into. Noble has dominated ever since they were buffed in patch 9.16, and despite some laughable nerfs on patch 9.16b, they're still as strong as ever. They're insanely OP, and if you can't beat the Noble players, then you might as well join them. And like always, we encourage our viewers to comment down below, telling us whether or not you like this type of content, and what kind of TFT videos you'd like to see in the future. But before we get started, I want you guys to click on the link below if you want to see huge improvements to your rank in League of Legends and in TFT. This Noble Guide will definitely give you guys an advantage going into your next few games, but if you really want to take it to the next level, why don't you find a coach on ProGuides.com. Alright, with that being said, let's jump into the guide. So, Nobles are clearly one of, if not the strongest comp in the game right now, but how did that come to be? Well, in patch 9.16, Riot wanted to make the late game Noble Fantasy more of a reality, so they buffed the armor and MR numbers to make them late game powerhouses. This change, coupled with gradually declining speeds of the game, made it much easier to hit Kale and force 6 Nobles. As soon as the patch hit, players were all over this comp, and it's been a menace ever since. Just this last patch, Riot said they were going to tone down the Nobles, but they really didn't do enough to address why it's so strong. Nobles are OP because they are strong into everything. The armor and MR they get is insane, meaning you can rock multiple 1-star units and really only need a hyper carry with the buff to pull off the comp completely. Getting a history lesson is great, but you guys are here to learn how to play the comp. So, for starters, let's talk about the units you should be running. Since looking for nobles at all stages of the game, you need to be picking them up whenever you see them. The early game nobles are great ways to pick up some quick wins, but you'll hit a dry spell in the mid game while you're looking for Leona and Kale. Despite the weak mid game, you'll want to keep looking for your nobles while either running the cheaper ones or retaining them on your bench. You ideally want to two star them, but it isn't the end of the world if you can't. You also shouldn't be looking to three star any of them. These units are highly contested and already take up a ton of bench space, so don't waste your gold on that. Instead, hold them until you hit Kale and then hard commit to the six noble comp. But what about each unit individually? Some of them are obviously stronger than others, but you'll need to run all of them regardless. Kale is obviously a strong unit, so we'll leave her out of the discussion. Put her in at level 1, give her some attack speed, and you're good to go. Besides Kale, though, Noble's golden carry is Lucian. Despite the recent nerfs, he's honestly still your best Noble until you find Kale. You want to play around him, giving him a couple items to keep your comp afloat in the mid game. The best item to give him is Luden's Echo, which will constantly proc since his total mana is so low. Your next best unit is definitely going to be Leona. Leona is a pretty beefy unit, and her ultimate can outright win you rounds if you're lucky. However, you won't find her till fairly late, so don't rely on her. After that, you have the three one-cost nobles. Garen is the best of the three and offers a good mix of damage and tankiness. Vayne is a mediocre unit, but can deal a reasonable amount of damage. And last and least, Fiora is actually okay early, but falls off really hard in the mid-game. Alright, so we've knocked all the nobles out of the way, and that's only 6 units. You're hopefully gonna make it past level 6, so you'll need more units to round out your composition. This is where nobles gets disgustingly strong. Since the 6 noble buff goes on all your allies, you can run some insanely high DPS, 2 or 3 unit bundles. There are 4 main carries that noble comps run as their 7th unit. Gangplank is one of them, Draven, Jinx, and the last one is Yasuo. You'll then round out the rest of your team based on the carry that you choose. Nobles give you a ton of resistances, but they need that high DPS carry to really make them shine. So what makes these units so great? Well, they deal a lot of damage and are easy to fit into your comp. GP and Jinx both give the Gunslinger with Lucian, Draven can easily be paired with Darius, and Yasuo, well, he's just a beast in his own right. On top of all this, you can even throw in multiple of these carries for three Blade Masters, which really makes your DPS spike. Alright, with all the units out of the way, let's break down the items you want and what your priorities should be. When going for your items, you mostly want to be thinking about the items that make the most sense for your carries. Jinx and Draven will typically use similar items, so you can go for some universally strong backline carry items like Rapid Fire Cannon, Red Buff, Runens, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, and Rage Blade. Those are your best options. 
Personally, our analysts recommend going Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge, and Bloodthirster on either Jinx or Draven, since it'll give you the most range, damage, and sustain that you need. As for Gangplank and Yasuo, you'll be looking to give them something to apply Grievous Wounds, and then some additional tankiness. Gangplank can either run Morellos or Red Buff, but not both. And then add some tanky items on him like GA and Dragon's Claw. All of that is the same for Yasuo, except the Morellos. Both GP and Yas can apply on-hit effects with their abilities, which makes Red Buff super good. And if you're looking for early damage, then you can pick up a Ludens Echo on Lucian. However, this item won't make or break your endgame comp, so only go for this if you're given a tier from your creeps. Last but not least, you can also pick up Morellos for Leona or Garen if you aren't running a GP, or you can build a Spear of Shojin to keep Kale ulting if you have the components in the late game. Alright, so based on all this, here's what your item priority should generally be in the first and second carousel. First, you're gonna want BF Sword, second, Recurve Bow, third, Chain Vest, then Giant's Belt, then Large Rod, then Tear, then Negatron Cloak, and then finally Spatula. Keep in mind that all of this is situational and that your item priority can easily shift depending on what you're randomly given. Alright, so let's talk about how to play Nobles. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward, so we're gonna spend less time on that and more time on general tips to improve your gameplay when attempting this comp. In the early game, it's clearly the best start to begin with Nobles or Knights. They're both what you're going to be running in the mid and late game, so grabbing them early on is a win-win. If you can't find them, then don't worry, just field the strongest team possible and pick up any nobles you see along the way. There honestly isn't much to say about the mid game because you're realistically just going to be running the strongest comp possible while keeping your nobles either on the board, or if none of them are two-starred, then you'll keep them on your bench. Some of the synergies you can pick up when you're around level 5 or 6 are Knights 4, Gunslingers 2, or Blademaster 3. Grabbing a two-star GP in the mid-game can be a great way to scale until you hit Kale. He can always be one of your major carry threats, and he fits in perfectly with Gunslinger and Blademaster, which makes him compatible with both Jinx and Draven. But regardless, you're going to be running a different mid-game comp every game, so don't get too hung up on it. A lot of playing nobles is transitioning from some alright mid-game comp into your full six nobles, so you'll have to get used to that. Look to grab nobles along the way, field a strong team, keep econing, get to level 7, and then roll for that Kale. That is the name of the game. Now, assuming you find Kale, the game is pretty much set. You'll more than likely guarantee a top 2 finish, and you're good to go unless there's another noble player who high rolled harder than you. Once you get Kale, toss her immediately. If you're level 6, then run only the 6 nobles. If you're level 8, then you can either run Jinx and Vi for Hextech, or Jinx plus any tanky frontliner like Sejuani, or any combination of Draven, GP, and Yasuo for three Blade Masters with Kale, or even Draven plus Darius for the Imperial if you can't find any other units. Once you find Kale, it's honestly all about finding that source of damage, which can come in a ton of forms. Don't tunnel on one specific carry, and instead take whatever is available in the pool. If multiple people are running Jinx and Draven, and you keep seeing GP in your store, then make him your carry. It's all about thinking on your feet. So that's pretty much it on how to play Nobles. It's a really simple comp and there isn't much to it other than using your TFT fundamentals. But where the comp does get difficult is when you can't find Kale. If other players have already hit Kale and you can't seem to find her, then you might need to transition out of Nobles into something else. Nobles is great, but it still depends on a 5 cost unit, so having a backup plan can save your life. There are a ton of backup comps you can run, but almost all of them will depend on you running 4 knights. This is why we recommend you pick up knights throughout the early and mid game. Having Garen is a given, but grabbing Darius, Mord, and Poppy early on will really help give you options if you need to pivot. No matter what comp you go, you'll need a front line, and four knights will do that for you. All of these pivots will still depend on the same carries as Noble, so you'll want to grab those as well. The only difference here is that if you don't have Kale, you'll be selling out all the Nobles that are no longer useful. The two pivot archetypes are Blademaster comps and Jinx Gunslinger comps. We're going to talk about these pivots from level 7 since that's when you'll most likely give up on Nobles. Here are some examples of Blademaster pivots. The bread and butter one is 4 knights with 3 Blademasters. Here Draven and Yasuo will be your carries. You'll run these two alongside the Fiora you likely had from Nobles until you can pick up a stronger Blademaster like Shen or ideally Yasuo. As for the Knights, the four previously mentioned are fine, but you can swap Mord out for Sejuani later if you don't intend on running Kindred or Phantom. At level 8, you'll want to toss in Kindred if you still have your Mord or add another universally strong unit to your composition. If running four Knights doesn't seem like enough damage for you, then you can opt for four Imperial, two Knights, three Blademasters if you happen to 
to find Swain and have some reasonable items for him. This is likely the strongest version of the pivot, but requires more situational items and some higher rolls on units. And lastly, if you're going into a ton of on-hit teams and just want more armor, then you can swap out two of your knights. This one is pretty situational and depends on how strong and what comps your opponents are running. The pivot for Jinx comps are honestly pretty similar, but let's get into them anyway. The easiest one to switch into is running four knights plus Jinx, followed by GP again as your secondary carry and kindred for the phantom trait and the added protection on Jinx. This composition isn't what you're going to stick with, but is what you'll want to run to get by until level eight. Once you hit eight, you can opt for four knights, four gunslingers, or you can go four gunslingers, two knights, and two guardians. Like the blademaster comp, the guardian comp is best into heavy auto attacking comps, while the knights are better for mixed and magic damage teams. With these comps, your pivots should be covered, so you won't have to worry about not hitting Kale. Even with these pivots, you can totally secure a top three finish if you play right, so don't worry about giving up on nobles. Sometimes the game just doesn't want you to run it, and it's your job to figure out how to pivot to give you guys the best chances of winning. That's the strategy of TFT. All right, that's it for our guide on how to play nobles and their pivots. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to be notified for the next one. Make sure to check out ProGuides.com if you guys want to get a great coach for TFT or League of Legends or any game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.